Hello guys, welcome to another part of PVP tutorials. So in this video, we are going to divide the code into different layers. And to do that, we are going to first create new layers in the API solution. Then we are going to move the code to the respective layers. And finally, we are going to call those functions from controller or other layers. So this is the flow of code. Earlier, we were just getting the output or inserting something just by using the controller. So this was this was represented using this before before diagram. Right now we will be dividing the layers into this one in the after layer. So we will be getting the request in the controller. We will be sending the data to service layer. The service layer will get the data from repositories, get it back, and if there is any reusable functions that needs to be done, we will be calling common layer for that. And eventually, once everything is fetched or created, we will return back the data to the controller and the controller will return back the response back. All right, let's jump into the code now and start coding, okay? So we already have the API layer here. So let's create few more layers and name it accordingly. So we'll go in solution, we'll right click, we'll click on add, we'll click on new project. And since it's a core, core project, core API solution, so we need to add new layers, new class libraries, which are for code. Okay, so we will be saying core class library. I'm sorry about that. Library. Yeah, so this is the one we need to select this one. Let's select this. Let's click on next. So we will be naming it employee management system dot services. Okay, the first layer will be services. Let's create this layer. Okay, this is going to take some time to create the services. So we already have the services here. Likewise, we are going to create the repositories layer and the common layer just like this. We will be using the same thing. So we will again go, click on add, new project. I will simply skip this part. So let's see in the part where all the layers are ready. All right. So we have this three layers ready here. The first one is application services. The next one is common and the third one is repositories. So now we are going to move the code to their respective layers. But before that, we have to connect all the layers to each other. So for that, let's start with repositories. Click on dependencies, right click on dependencies, click on add project reference and select common. Why are we selecting common? Because there will be few entities which we might need to use while returning back the data. So click on OK. And now if you check here in the project section, you will be able to see the common layer. So that means repositories is now connected to common. Whatever classes will be there can now be used in repositories. So now we need to add the project references for application services as well. So right click, add project reference and this time only select repositories. Note that we need to get both the common and the repositories dependency in application services. But there is one small thing. So if I now go and check in projects, you will be able to see I have selected repositories. And if you open this, you will be also able to see common. So this is the new feature that is there in .NET Core. You don't need to select repositories and common separately. If repositories is selecting common, internally you will be selecting the common as well. So that's one good thing for .NET Core. Now finally, come in the Employee Management System API layer, right click, add project reference, and now select only the application services. Click on OK. Open this. Again, if you go here, you will be able to see I have selected the application services. If you open this, you will be able to see the repositories layer. If you open this, you will be able to see the common layer. So that's how we have resolved the dependencies. Okay. So now since the layer dependencies are done, now let's go ahead and move the code to the respective places. Okay. In the controller class, we have many endpoints here and we also have this in memory variable. This needs to be moved to the repositories layer. Besides, we have this entities as well. If you notice here, we have the employee class and there is another DTO called employee list DTO. So we need to move this to the common layer as well. So let's start with the common layer first. So in here, in the common layer, right click, click on add, new folder, name it entities. Now inside entities, right click and create a folder for DTOs. Click on this class, cut it and paste it here. 
the same thing for employees as well cut it let's use this option here cut and paste it here now both the entities are there in the dto's folder inside entities that's great now open any of this class and if you check the namespace the namespace will be wrong it should be employee management system dot common dot entities dot dto's but that's not the case so let's change this i'm doing this for the best practices you might not even do it that's absolutely fine and yes so employee management system dot common dot entities dot dto's i'll fix for both of them all right so now we have moved both the entities from the entities folder to the commons entities dto's folder we don't need this folder anymore let's delete it off we have an extra class here in common layer which is not needed let's delete this as well all right so we are ready with the common now let's start with the repositories so back to controller and now if you notice we have some problems here why because these entities were present earlier in a folder called entities inside the employee management layer but now it has been moved to common layer so we have to add the namespaces as well so you can either click on this call button here and this will give you this using statement or you can use the shortcut click on control dot and this will pop up the same drop down so you need to use this select statement so once I click this, you will see all the errors gone. Besides, this fixing statements are not needed anymore. So we can remove this. Everything is fixed again as earlier before. Now let's go ahead and work on the repositories now. We'll start with this variable employee list. Come here in the repositories, add a new folder called repositories. Now many of you might ask, why are we naming a folder called repositories? because we can directly use a class and go ahead, right? But no, there is a reason. It is because of the good practices. Because in the near future, we are going to have some folders for context, interfaces, and many more. That's why we should have a separate folder for repositories. Now inside this repositories folder, add a new class. I'll just reuse this class. I'll cut this and paste it here. I will name this employee repository, right? No, my spelling is I mean, employee repository. Click on enter. Then I have to click yes, and the name should get changed. Yes. Make this a public class. Okay. And now we need to move this entire employee list variable in the employee repository class. But before that, let me tell you one thing. This is going to get a bit tricky. So tighten your seat belts and be very focused. Because we are going to do some major changes. Alright, let's cut this and paste it here inside the public class. Right? And now, if you notice, all these will start failing because there is no employee list variable here inside this class. The same case for here because we have not added the using statement for employee. So, first let's add the using statement. Alright, we are fixed in the repository. And now, if you notice, everything is failing here. Nowhere will there is an employee list variable. So let's take one example and move the respective codes to their respective lists. I'll start with the get employee by ID because it's a small one and it should, it should not be much tricky. So before starting to move the code, let us first understand which part of code belongs to which layer. If you notice here, the try catch block will be there inside the controller. This if statement should belong inside the service layer because it's a business logic. This is a link queue. So this part needs to be moved in the repository. Layer. All right. Let's start with it now. I will take the signature here and paste it here in the repository. The same thing for here. So let's cut this link queue part and paste it here. Let's initialize this variable var employee. And now we have to return back the input. Alright. What is this error here? Uh, we have to add the reference for link. So let's add the using statement and everything is fine. Awesome. So now let's focus on the services layer. 
So in here we will only have the interfaces and the service classes. That's why we don't need to create a separate folder for the services class. Let's reuse this class and rename it to employee service. Again, the name of this class will get stained. Let's make this class public. All right. And now come in the controller class. We have to take this logic and move it to the service layer. I'll copy this entire thing, the function signature, open the brackets, add the using statement, click on control dot and you should be able to move this logic in here. So now in the services layer, we are checking if the ID is less than zero. If yes, we are throwing this exception. But what do we do after this? Well, after this, we have to pass this ID to this repository function and get the employee result back, isn't it? So what do we do? We have to create an object for employee repository. So right now, I will be newly instantiating an employee repository object. In the next video, we are going to do this in a better way using dependency injection. So let's say private employee repository. Click on control dot and you should be able to see the using statement. Why? Because we have already added the dependency at the very start. Give a name. Let's say employee repo is equals to new employee repository. Open close the brackets and that's it. Now let's use this variable employee repo and call the repository function paste the variable here, click on dot and you should be able to see the function here, get employee by id, pass the variable inside this, but what is this doing? This function is returning back an employee, either we need to store this into a variable or we just return it back to the controller layer. So well, I prefer to return it back to the controller directly instead of storing it into a variable. If there are several logics that needs to be checked, after fetching the value, then you can store it into a variable do the validations and return the variable back. But for our case, we don't have any other validations left, so we will just be returning back the same. All right. Now in the controller layer again, the same way we had done for the service, we will be doing here. Let's say private employee service. Click on control dot. Add the using statement. Name the variable as employee service equals newly instantiate the class and that is it. Copy the variable here, paste it here, click on dot, use the same function name, pass the id here and that is it. But this service function is returning back an employee data. So let's store the data inside the variable. Well, that is it. That's how we divide the names. Now we can do the same thing for all the other endpoints as well. But I would not keep you waiting. Instead, let me fix this in the background and let me show you this in a second. Welcome back. We have moved all the code to the respective places for all the endpoints. So this is how it looks like. So let me walk you through it. We'll start with the get employees function. So we can either click on control F12 or we can right click and click on go to implementation. This will actually take you to the real place. So yeah, for, for get employees, it looks like this. We are calling the employee service. The service is calling the repository and the repository and the repository is returning back the employee list. It's the same for get employee. If you notice here, we are calling the service function. We are simply passing the name here and in the link queue, we are just, let me actually walk you through for the create and update employees. For create employee, we had some validations. So all those validations will now move into the service function. You see all the validations here. And once all these validations are checked and the exception is not thrown, only after that we are calling the create employee repository function. Well, now if you go into the create employee repository function, well, you will see all the link queue related stuffs here, right? So let us come back for the update employee. For the update employee, we are calling the service function. We are passing the ID and employee. We are receiving it here. It here. We are checking the validations. And if, if all the validations are true, only in that case, we are calling the update employee function from repository. 
So let's come here and if you notice here all the depository related stocks are there in this method. And once everything is done, we are returning back true. So this goes here. If everything goes well, we are returning back the true again. And finally, from here also, the endpoint will return back true. It's the same for delete employee as well. Well, I'm going to upload the code in GitHub. So make sure you check the description box. The link will be present in the description box. All right, let's go ahead and test all the endpoints. And if possible, let's debug one endpoint as well. So let's run the application. I'm already ready with the endpoint calls here, which will actually return success for every endpoint. So it's running now. Let's add the endpoint for create employee and um, go in the postman back. Let's check for get employee by ID. It returns back the data. For get employee list, it returns back the list. For get employee by name, it returns back the name. For the create employee. We have added our endpoint for create employee. Let's go inside and test it out. So we have received some data out here. Let's send it to the service function. Let's go inside. Well, if you check here the employee.name, we are testing it out. We are checking the email. Now this employee object will be passed to the repository function. Let's go inside. And now the employee list has five. It will check for the employees. Let's step out of this, I guess. I'll continue this and step into it doesn't throw any exception that's great and again step out of this so let's add one endpoint click on continue we have the cursor here again now if you notice the employee has a id 6 and if you run this line we'll see there are six employees now and the last one is the test employee employee we just added that's great well, this is how it actually looks when we debug the application. The same is for update and the delete. Everything works as expected. So now, let me conclude this video by saying this particular way is followed by every single person who has a sound knowledge for VWPI applications. Well, this is the right way. So try using it. In the next video, we are going to replace the old style newly instantiation with dependency injection. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me. Even if it's fake.